G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. This week we get the welding finished on our arms and our wings permanently joined to the hull. Right, the wind's starting to come back up again, so I'll stop welding for the day. But that's 22 and a half metres of weld, or uh, what's that, about 77 feet, I think, something like that. Um, so yeah, we've got essentially, what, one, two, three, four, five runs on this side, and then four on the other, obviously one on this back edge here. So we'll go through now and uh, clean up all of the leading and trailing edges etc with weld. Um, just go over it with a flap wheel and get that nice and smooth. And then down the centre here where we've, um, you can sort of see it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's basically sunk down ever so slightly below the surface level. So we're going to leave that as it is. Um, we will probably fear them in, but the reason we welded that fully is Tony, the sandblaster in the yard here, he's bloody good when it comes to corrosion and figuring out what's going to last and what isn't on trawlers. He said, no matter what we do, that's going to crack apart and you're going to get water in there and then rust and you're going to have a whole bunch of dramas down the track. May not happen for four, five, six years, but either way, it will happen. Um, he said, if you buzz a weld down there, problem's gone, don't have to think about it again. Um, I was going to just stitch them because um, I was thinking strength. Um, it would have been strong enough, that's not really the issue. The issue was more the fact that it would have microscopically moved, caused a crack in the paint, and then we would have had dramas going down the track. So, don't have to think about that now. Solved. Day two of Weldathon. The early still. Sun's not up. Let's go see how much we can weld. So, winter in the yard basically means that I have to set the little workshop up to be warm and light. You get a bit of a cold breeze southerly happening in the winter and um, a lot of boats go north on the southerly it gets, it's pretty awesome for heading north but it's also bloody cold because it comes from the southern ocean sun's coming up that's yeah, pretty cool sight so today's to-do list well this morning's to-do list We've got quite a bit of welding to do, a fair bit of flappering, and then a little bit of sandblasting at the end of the day. That's the arm basically welded up, but what I wanted to show you, when you use flux core white at right, you get a pretty nice even bead, and it's, it's not like it's blowing wind at the moment. So we're using um, dual shield wire, so we've got basically flux core in the wire, as well as argon gas spread over it. But this is what happens when you get it wrong. Look at that, all the way down the middle. 
pinhole porosity and that's probably goes for about a foot so where we go so it starts starts basically back here and works its way all the way along to about there somewhere so what I have to do to fix that is essentially grind it out you can't have any porosity in there I've got to grind that right the way out and then just weld that back up so we've basically done a bit of experimentation we've figured out why it does that with the you know why that porosity happens with the wire that we're using if we don't have enough electrical stick out we don't generate enough heat in the wire and that doesn't generate if, if we don't get that heat it doesn't activate the flux inside the wire and there's obviously a bit of wind it blew all of the argon away um, and consequently so there's just basically no shielding so no flux core and no argon when that uh, weld was done um, I didn't see it when I was welding I had my shield on basically too dark and, and just didn't see it um, yeah so got to grind it out and fix it up grind it what have we done with our bloody... Up there. Right in... Oh, I put them in them. <laughs> I made a space. And that's the result when the welder does his job properly. Funny day when I can pack the welder into the engine room <laughs> and then realise a month later I haven't bloody welded for a month. <laughs> yeah, that'll be terrible. <laughs> By the time that comes, you won't have time for welding. <laughs> right, we're going to have to get We've gone through and soapy water sprayed the wings. We've got our little test rig set up here. So this guy here is basically holding two PSI and has been for a while now, probably I don't know, a good 40 minutes or more. We heard a few creaks when we first set it up, putting the air pressure in, but other than that, it's stopped and it's holding plenty of good pressure. In the background, Trev's blasting with our sandblaster, so we've got by that's our 2,500 PSI water blaster and then over here we've got our um, dry sandblasting sand pot and they combine into a wet sandblaster so over the back there you can sort of see Trev blasting the wings and there's bugger all dust like you can sort of see if I come back just a little bit of water spray but basically no dust so it's an awesome way of blasting and what we've done is blasted up the doubler for the other side here so you can see right in there we've got fresh clean metal so ready to weld and we've given it a CRC spray so it's not going to rust overnight or anything and then when Bruce gets here in the morning we'll get those welded up I'm not going to the supermarket anymore I went up to say hey we have to get going to get that bullshit we'll tomorrow don't worry about it Right -o. <laughs> uh, we'll just put the rest of the sand in here. Coming up good, eh? One of the nice to have jobs that we've been wanting to do for a while is on the pins that the wings use to um, clip onto the side of the boat. We wanted to weld some stainless chain onto the end of each pin, and this allows us to, if we ever have to take the pin out in the water, if we're diving to take the pin out, we can tie a bit of rope onto the end of the pin so that no matter what, we can't actually lose it. Um, it just means that we can always have it fastened to the boat in some way so that it's a bit of a, a backup just in case. I see you're way ahead of me. Significant or not, it doesn't matter really because we got plenty of room on the other side to put a bolt. Alright, so we can just tack it on there if it's pretty close. 
for a while we had this, the TIG welder set up for stainless. We put the uh, pin in the vise and tacked on a washer onto the end of each pin. Once we had that on it was nice and square. We then spun the TIG all the way around and got a nice bead and this stops the pin from being able to come out at one end. The other end just gets a bolt and a washer to hold it in. So it's first thing on uh, Friday morning. I took the day off work and today's the day we're getting the wings on. The sun's not up yet, still black outside. But what the plan is, we've got the forklift booked for nine. I think Bruce will be here about maybe eight-ish. We don't, haven't set a time with Bruce, but he's coming in the morning, so I'm thinking it's gonna be about eight. The plan is once um, Bruce is set up to weld the mild steel and stainless um, hinge to the doubler, um, he'll be doing that down the back by himself, and then Trev, me, and one of the guys from the marina will get the forklift, pick up the first wing and mount that onto the, uh, what is it, port side. Um, and then by the time we've done that, it'll probably take us half an hour to do that I guess, and by the time we've done that I'm thinking Bruce will probably be close to finished on that um, doubler. We'll fit that to the wing, pick the whole wing up, come around and mount it on the um, starboard side, and that'll allow us to weld that doubler on. So at that point we'll have two wings fixed to the boat. So exciting day, hopefully we'll have wings by lunchtime. I thought I'd come down and do a check, see if the um, wing is holding pressure. It's the next day, so it's been holding pressure for like 12 hours or something. Oh yeah. I don't know where it was yesterday, it was about there. Two, two PSI, two and a bit. That's definitely fine. So we'll go and um, set this wing up here and we'll do exactly the same. See how we go. Do the soapy water test to do any obvious leaks, but I think we'll just sort of see if it's going to hold pressure over some time. I came in and Jess has done a few dishes and it's conked her out completely. Perfect wind direction. Morning darling. Morning. Don't see the anchor on the back. God it looks amazing. <laughs> it's pretty big when you see it sitting in there Gorgeous. in a ute. Taking up most of a ute tray. <laughs> <laughs> I love how shiny it looks. I know, it's pretty awesome, eh? We should enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> I'm really stoked with the quality of the galvanising. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm just looking at the wings and just um, appreciating it's the last day they'll be down there. Or they may end up back on there at some point, you never know. But <laughs> the plan is that today they're going on and we'll paint and do everything else on them while they're on the sides. We'll be having them sitting on the A-frames, so they'll be resting quite low, low down on the sides of the boats. And uh, we'll finish the doubler work and, and everything else, but it's a pretty momentous day really. It's kind of cool, and it's cold, it actually is really cold today. <laughs> so, uh, rained overnight, um, we weren't sure if the rain would stop, but it stopped so we can go ahead, so brilliant. You excited? Yeah, very much, eh? Here's a better look at the anchor. It came up absolutely beautiful. I'm probably going to rave on about this for a while, but I'm so stoked with that galvanising. It's really come up beautiful. So yeah, we'll, um, we dragged it off the back of the ute, and then we've got to get it up into the bow roller up there. So you can see the red crane um, on the top of the deck there. That thing's going to get modified. We're going to be fitting a winch to that, and if we need to, we can lift the anchor up onto the deck of Brewpeg. Um, or alternatively we can just haul it up the bow roller and um, with the anchor winch and the chain and everything We are going to get the chain galvanized. We decided to get it galvanized We spoke to the um, galvanizers and took in basically the worst sort of images that we could of like the stuff with the worst rust and everything They were pretty confident that they could deal with that. So um, yeah, we're going to take it in and give them a shot at galvanizing it And then the last little bit I need to get a new bow roller made <laughs> So the bow roller that's on it Let me see if I can zoom in and show you the bow roller that is on it at the moment is non-existent and uh, it's because the diameter was too small. I need a 150 millimeter diameter. Um, I'm actually going to do 125 millimeter because that's the radius that we've got in the anchor roller. Um, just because that's the discs that we could machine it with when we were making that shank. So we're going to get one machined up in town. Um, I've been told to use aluminium actually by the, um, the anchor manufacturers and stuff. I've been researching and googling and that sort of thing and a lot of the, the, um, the shops recommend using aluminium because it's the one that takes the most hiding. So we've got to go and get something machined up for that soon. I had a look on your blogs. Oh yeah? Yeah, have a look at them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, you see, you see 
what we did last time, all there was, there was nothing on the, on the welding or anything. Just the up and the up and down yeah. fast motion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looked, like, looked like the bloody thing was flying. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a plan that we're going to get it. We've got winches and everything lifting up. We're going to get a shot way out there. We're going to zoom right in so it's just a, a, and then speed it up and yeah. do this on that. <laughs> Excellent. Set up for Polar Bundaberg. So it has been cold this morning. It's Crazy. cold, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's not just me. Look, look at these two girls just sitting there. I know, and then Sunday it's like 8 degrees overnight. So while the guys weld the hinge on, right out. We're going to get stuck into getting this wing here onto the side of the boat. So the plan. We've cleared out all underneath so we can get the forklift in pretty easily and uh, yeah we're just going to plug it into this doubler, into the hinges and then we're going to, we don't have the arms or any way of lifting it up at the moment so what we're going to do is those A-frames that are sitting underneath the wing down the end there, we're just going to stick it under the, the far end of the wing and it'll just sort of droop for now and then we'll hook up the arms and get all of the lifting gear sorted out afterwards. Let's get into the boat eh? So I want to know how heavy these wings are, so I got a 500kg fish scale, basically doink doink and it'll weigh how heavy the wing is, so when the boys have finished welding up the other wing, I'm going to hook it up, we'll dangle it off the forklift and we'll see how heavy these things actually are. Slight change of plan, we're going to measure both wings, so what we want to do is measure this wing that's hanging off now, we're going to hook it up from the arm um, fitting and that's going to tell us how much weight is basically hanging off that arm, it should theoretically be half the wing weight but um, we're going to double check anyway. Yeah. 
Okay, so what we've just figured out, so the arm weighs 60 kg, exactly what we thought. The um, wing is 220 at the lifting point, so the winches are going to see a load of 280 kgs um, as it sits with no sort of water pressure. If we lift fast, we're going to get a bit more water pressure because it's going to be water sitting on top that has to displace over the sides. It's not a big deal. When you're going forward, you're steaming forward at like half a knot, that sort of thing, the water will easily come off the wing. It's not a big deal. Um, so that's well within our capabilities of the winches. The winches can lift uh, 5,000 pounds, so I think that's about two and a half ton or two and a half thousand kgs, roughly, something like that. Someone will surely correct me on that one, but um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, 300 kgs and the winches can lift a couple of ton each. We're going to be fine. And that's at a single purchase as well. If we want to do a double purchase, a two to one purchase, we can lift twice as much at half the speed with those winches. So we've got plenty of scope on those things. So uh, we'll get to measuring the full wing and see what we're working with. Can you change the other ones around like that? Yep. <laughs> At least they've got a half a chance of getting to where, to where I want to weld. <laughs> this one's ready to go, but your wing's up on there to weld when no. you're done. Hold it there. Hold it up there. a little to camera explain the yeah. navigation yeah. behind me is a path that we have to go with the forklift so you can sort of see there's quite a bit of area that we've got to wiggle through we've also got height restrictions so we've got to try and get it between the stairs on that side and this um, pillar holding this boat up on this side so we'll see what we have to do normally you have these acros which are the angled bar that um, basically locks between the bottom of that the base there and then up onto the boat in our case it's um, hooked onto the side of the spons in there for this boat here We've taken this one out for now so that we've got essentially a clear path between that beam there and our stairs but it's likely we're going to have to lift the wing over top of the whole lot so that we can get it down and clear. Once we're through there then it's pretty straightforward. We've got enough room pretty much to just manoeuvre everything around so I'll drag these, um, the ladder and the tank and that sort of thing out of the way over here and we should be good to go. <laughs> No, we're thinking of going up and over, so coming through here, up and over, wing up and over. Do they still go back to the I don't know. It's not a bad. And what could we ride that one off? Cut this one off. Here you go around. I don't know how long this steer's going to last with the crashing I'm doing. <laughs> Bumper bars are in. I do. Alright, uh, where's, our, where's our lift? There it is. It's heavier than we thought. I'd, I'd say probably close to 180 kilos. 170 kilos. Per quarter. Per corner. Uh, that there. There? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon We're 220. 100 bucks if it's more. <laughs> oh, you weighed the other yeah, one. the other one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not, not really a bet on my part, more of an investment. <laughs> it was a pretty good return on investment. <laughs> I love having a smile on your face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, there's, there's, there's a lot of steel in this. Yeah. It's a bit of weld too. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Estimated 300 kg, 321. Oh, okay. Oh, 323. Yeah, we go down there. <laughs> I'm helping, keeping you out of the way. <laughs> I can see why you got your pin in so easy. 
Uh, come back that way about three mil. Hold up. Oh. Just like last time, a couple of bits of 75 mil um, box section. Stick one on the trailing edge, one on the leading edge, and we can put a flat um, bar between them, a straight bar between them. Put a level on. We know where we're working with. Here's the bait level up there. Yeah, we spent a bit of time when we put it up on the settings, getting it right. We leveled up the the wheelhouse dash. Yeah, so it's as good as I mean I don't know what the level it again. It's good as I think we're going to get. Yeah. What we're doing is basically figuring out where the wing's going forward and aft and up and down on the boat and then also figuring out the angle of attack of the wing. So do the angle of attack, that's what the aluminium bar that's clamped onto the wing does. We can put a level on that and we can tell exactly what angle we're actually going between the, the leading edge and the trailing edge. Now we're just trying to grind off some antifouls so that we can get it on there. We're pretty sure that we've got the alignment bang on so we'll get stuck into getting this welded up. So I put a little little stitch here and then I'll break it off and bring yeah. it out. Go around to dog it all in. You say there's a bulkhead here? Yeah, rub it out, Marcus. Watch your eyes. Is there much to move on the top? No, really. No. This one here's got a big, I'm going to put my finger in there. Yeah, right. But that's only because that, that panel's yeah. bloody. It's soft.
While the boys finish up the last of the welding, they're just going across the bottom and then they're going to do the two ends and they'll go around and do the three uh, full runs. So there's two additional runs to do on top of that first root run. Once we got that done, that's the doubler joined onto the boat. It ain't ever coming off. When Bruce was welding the doubler on the bottom run, um, he ended up blowing a hole through into the engine room. Um, we didn't know it, but we had a good look at the, where the hole was, and on the inside of the engine room, right beside one of the ribs, there was a little bit of um, pitting and corrosion that went down. So obviously when it got hot with the external welding, it just blew straight through. So we filled the hole with weld from the outside, and then the plan is uh, on the inside we've got to do a little bit of sandblasting in the engine room and do some um, spot painting and things in there. So when that happens, we'll blast out the weld that's on the inside of the engine room where the hole is, and we'll pad weld on that side so that we get a nice solid cap of steel. Pad welding minor corrosion like that is a common way of solving it in commercial trawlers. Oh, I saw that at the end. I saw the arms and that going back up, but I was just watching it. But I didn't no, actually there's see. One, there's, uh, there's one where you're one. in it. There's oh, one is it? You're welding in it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I thought. I thought maybe. I think it might have been the one after the wings going up and down. Yes, that's was right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The one after. Yeah. Have a good day, guys. Now the wings are on, we start the prep needed to sort out our doublers for the deck and the hardware needed to bolt the arms up into their um, mounted position. So you can just make out the wings on either side of Brewpeg. There's a cool image, Brewpeg with her flippers out. You got ice like summer sky, if a smart could kill I'd die. And now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.